Not a place I have to hide in. Life's not worth a damn till you can say I am what I am. I just watched a uh, wonderful rehearsal of uh, Pygmalion, which will be taking place at the premiere, will be taking place next week at uh, Smog Alley. And I'm now joined by the director, uh, Liam Halligan. Liam, welcome to uh, Dublin City FM. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for asking yeah. me to come. Yeah. Oh, always, always a delight to talk to our friends. Theatre, but Liam, before we talk about uh, yourself and the cast, Pygmalion, does it suffer from the fact that most people know My Fair Lady, but not that many people know Pygmalion itself, which is to a large degree what the, the Academy Award winning movie was based on? Yeah, no, it's an interesting question. I, um, well, first of all, the play is just far more interesting, really, than the film. Um, and uh, I think once people see it, they're just real. They recognise the story, sure. but they just see how kind of complex it is, mm -hmm. and how appropriate it is now, even now, a hundred years after it was first produced. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it's just been fascinating, really. And the last thing I suppose I would want to do is remind an audience that a play was written a hundred years ago. You know, I think theatre should be. It should appeal to us in the moment, directly in the moment, it should uh, help us to understand our own lives, our own relationships. So we're not dressing it in, in it was written in 1912 initially, uh, we're not dressing it in 1912 uh, regalia, because I think you're just recreating a kind of museum piece in some ways, you know, beautiful as that can be. Um, but I just think the ideas in the play, the male-female battle, um, is very, still very, relevant. So we're going for a, a, a beautiful aesthetic, everything will look very elegant, I think as it should. Um, we're going for a real uh, simplicity, so that the language and the actors really and performances really come across. Yeah. It's written by one of our greats, Stephen Shaw. Um, do you yeah. think Dublin appreciates uh, George Barrett himself? I think we're starting to, do you know what I mean? We're starting to, I mean we forget that he won the Nobel Prize in 1925 yeah, I think, yeah, and um, the Abbey had done a couple of plays there recently so I think there's a renewed interest and even in England at the moment I know there's various productions of, of other plays of his so I think suddenly uh, he's he's become very very interesting um, and I think maybe it's just because our times are so troublesome now you know and he was writing at a very troublesome time you know before the war after the war and, and actually I just had a little quote here when, when, when he when he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1925 um, he was given it to. He was given it as a very for a very particular reason, and I think it's a lovely reason. And it says he was given the award for his work, which is marked by both idealism and humanity. It's sim stimulating satire, often being infused with a singular poetic beauty. And I think that's a beautiful. Um, we forget that it is as complex as that, and it's very original writing. You know that combination of idealism and humanity. And with beauty and with satire, you know, it's a lovely balance. Um, and I think if we can get half of that across, we'll be on a bit of a winner. You know, what I've seen so far in the area houses, Liam, you are ninety percent. <laughs> oh, that's I, good to hear. Just watching it, and I wondered, uh, uh, just watching the rehearsals, how much of Shaw do you think is actually in it? Because what struck me uh, watching it again, making it personal, it it made me feel like. North inner city kid in 60s Trinity College with me with the Hellier accent and uh, all those people in there with their beautifully wonderful yeah, class British yeah, accents. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I to over here and show a talk. He never lost his Dublin accent really. So I just no, wonder. No. Well, I mean, that's really interesting that you say that because I think Eliza, who's from uh, outside of that class and is a, a, a girl selling flowers on the street, making a living, trying to make a living and getting by and reasonably happy in her own little world. And then this happens. Um, you know, people today in Dublin feel very intimidated by going into Trinity. I know lots of people on the north side who never go near Trinity College because well, no, they don't even know that they're allowed in. Even now, you might wander in accidentally, but I don't think they feel that they haven't got a right to go there even. Um, so I think people relate to that. Uh, 
that class system that's still very pertinent in England, in Ireland, everywhere. Indeed. So, uh, you know, it, 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 I think we've kept the Englishness of it uh, because the language is just so beautiful. Um, and I think uh, uh, Shaw was writing it for that kind of uh, delivery. Um, however, we've made Mrs. Pierce, the housekeeper, a, a good solid Dublin woman, uh, which I think works really well. Um, so all the class differences are there, and I think it's still very relevant, and I would hope that the lovely audiences who come to Smock Alley will really relate to it, uh, because there still is a snobbery in our society that's uh, very often referred to, because we like to think we're classless, yes. but of course we're not. Yes, we're pleased to know that there's the occasional double accents, and even there are many country <laughs> accents in Trinity College now, so well, that's I know, isn't that funny? The odd Catholic would have been Oh, we won't go into that detail. We won't. <laughs> I would describe it as a comedy of manners. How would you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's absolutely a comedy, particularly that last act that you saw Indeed. is, is the, the manners at its height. Uh, but, you know, it, if you saw a bit of the second half, which is Act 4 and Act 5 together, yeah. he, it, it becomes like Ibsen. It becomes um, almost deadly serious, mm -hmm. with a really serious, interesting debate. Um, Ibsen was very influenced by, sorry, Shaw was very influenced by Ibsen. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in Act 4 and Act 5, when Eliza finally acquires the, the delivery and um, the sense of, of being um, an upper class person, uh, she's sort of somehow that changes her and she has, uh, there's a battle within her. I mean, she doesn't want to lose her own soul, even though her exterior has yeah. changed. So it's, it's a very, uh, yeah, it's still very relevant. Um, so there's very, very serious debates between Higgins and Eliza that are, could have been written by Ibsen, yeah. pretty much. Just looking at what I saw, um, although I only saw a small section of it because clearly it's impressive today, what I saw was what seemed to be trying to get across the idea that somehow or other that nurture is uh, trumped, do you use a dreadful term? Uh, uh, nurture trumps nature. In other words, that we can we can smooth out your rough edges, that uh, we can transcend your environment. Is that the uh, essentially the gist? I of it? think that's uh, yeah, without losing your your soul and your real well, personality. Key, I yeah. think yeah, and even it's not about gender or class really. In the end, I think what Shaw is saying is that every human being has has that ability to learn and develop without losing their soul, without selling their soul. And um, you know that's that's the idealism that he's after. So the battle in the play becomes not only about class but about gender. And uh, will Eliza ever actually match the male Higgins, or will he match her? You know, and that debate is still hugely relevant. You know, um, yeah. So I suppose she does change outwardly, but essentially, and we've we've made this a. Uh, as we, it's something that we've discovered in, in, when you really dig into the play now, looking at it from a modern perspective, that uh, we're very clear now at the end that Eliza actually is, is the same person as she was at the beginning, but she just has, uh, she's got stronger, mm -hmm. in fact. She realised that at the last moment, yeah. that actually she has everything that is required to get wherever she wants. Yeah. It's just confidence. It's interesting, I've spent the last four days watching that great theatrical performance called the Democratic National Convention, and I thought, again, watching your rehearsals, Shaw sure could have been doing songs. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely. What the wise old man. Yeah. The wise yeah. old man yeah. talking about uh, the merits of the, um, the disenfranchised. In the yes. yes, 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 no, absolutely. Um, so I, I, I think this, I, mean, I hope this production of this play will, will endear Shaw sure more to to, to Dubliners and to Irish people. We do, we slightly forget that he's um, mm. uh, so revered and such, such a wonderful, nah, wonderful writer and a political, dri politically driven person. Yeah. You know. Well, he was a Fabian, wasn't he? He was. He yeah, 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 had the webs and the Fabian. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we, 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 somehow, Shaw or Casey, and we, uh, well, we kind of forget about Shaw sometimes, and he's, he's actually just astounding. And I think we're starting to realise that now. Yeah, well, I'm still a great fan of uh, uh, Maxims for Revolutionaries, uh, which is some, some of his aphorisms. Uh, oh, I think okay. that's from Alan Zuckerberg. Yeah. Ah, right, okay. Yeah. 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 Just uh, in a nutshell for people, 
the, ba the gist of the play, it, it's based on a, uh, a Greek myth. Uh, yeah. I'll pick that in on the man who falls in love with a statue. Uh, yeah. Well, he, yeah, I think the artist gets, uh, he has some probably bad experiences with, with women or, uh, <laughs> so he decides, okay, I'm going to make my own one, so he okay. builds a statue of his ideal woman, and he, uh, the woman come, becomes alive, yes. and he falls in love with yes. this ideal woman. Yes, so it's like a moving it's mannequin, doesn't it? Yeah, yes. yeah. and we actually have a mannequin on the set. Oh, the I see that. I but, um, yeah, he does, he does fall in love with this woman. Well, there's a whole question there about what does that mean? in love with, you know, and uh, does she become more, has he created a monster, or has he created something that he didn't expect, you know, so there's that, um, that's that sort of story there as well, I think, um, that show, uh, yeah, it's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. We should remind people that anybody coming to see it, they're not going to get to see the songs, they're not going to get to see uh, uh, Professor Higgins uh, doing the next hour or No, no, yeah. but we do have a song. Okay. <laughs> well, we do have a song, and we have a beautiful original music composed by a young, young composer called Oscar Dukes. So, um, uh, yeah, I think it'll be, uh, you won't miss my brother. I, I won't be disappointed if I don't have to do the way Spain, uh, Spain, you, you can okay. ask me for your money back to get disappointed. <laughs> and by George, he's got it. Tell us about the cast. Uh, now, what I've seen is some very talented uh, people. Yeah, yeah, I've been very, very, very lucky. Um, Paul Mead is playing Higgins. Um, Paul has been an actor for, gosh, what, 20, 20 years more. Uh, he's a director as well and a writer and very established and kind of very well respected. He also teaches acting actually at the, at the Lear in Trinity. So uh, we're just very lucky to have him. Um, Anna Shields McNamee is playing Eliza and uh, she's a young woman that uh, I, I do some teaching at the Gacy School of Acting and Anna's an ex-student of mine. And, uh, she's walked at the gate, she's just been in the Vikings. Um, and she, I just knew that uh, she was the girl for the role, really. It's a, it's a really, really demanding uh, role. Every, every act, she's in every act, she changes and every act develops. It needs an actress really at the top of her game. The same with Higgins, and um, thankfully they get on like a house on fire and uh, they're creating some real exciting moments. So Jerry Byrne is in it that people will recognise from Fair City. Uh, Deirdre Monaghan, people who recognise from the telly as well. Some really, really experienced players. Um, two young, lovely young people, Jamie Hallahan from the Gacy School, and a lovely girl called Andrea Cleary from Tara Quirk. People might remember from, I think it was Fair City as well. Um, and the wonderful David O'Mara that really people will see on TV now, but he needs to be on stage a lot more. He's fantastic. So I've been blessed. Yeah. You've got your premiere coming up next uh, Wednesday. Yes, um, Wednesday. Yeah. Tell us about that. how long is the run for? It's five weeks uh -huh. uh, until the early September. Decent, yeah. It's a decent run, uh -huh. and um, we have a matinee on a Saturday and a matinee on a Sunday. We don't play on Mondays, and that's worked out very well. Uh -huh. You can also, there's a wonderful deal in Smart Valley. They have a beautiful room upstairs where you uh, dine. Uh -huh. room. Yes. And uh, uh, you can have a brunch and you can have a lunch and then see the play uh -huh. for um, a really, really the best value in town. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, I have to admit to people I've been living happy in the last couple of weeks, but I always enjoy going to Smock Alley. There's just something about it. There is. Um, yeah, it's, know, a, it's, it's, yeah it's such a beautiful building. No, and I think the fact that it's an old church uh, somehow changes the atmosphere. People like being in there. You know, it's not intimidating like some of these modern, uh, modern cold stone buildings. You know. Uh, I, can, I can remember before it was done. Uh, yeah, you can see them all. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. a, it's a fabulous venue. I know you're busy to get back to rehearsals. All I can say is you've got a great production in the making uh, and in the best conditions that I can make. Thanks very much. Thank, you, very Thank you for that. Thank Thank you very much. My world that I want to have a little pride in. My world, and it's not a place I have to hide in. Life's not worth a damn till you can say I am.